Yeah, so this is the Texas State Railroad train. And we're here, we're doing a little excursion for the weekend uh, on a Saturday. They run this little train from Palestine to Rusk, Texas, and then back. So come along and see what it's like. Palestine, Texas is in the central part of East Texas. The Texas State Railroad was some of the first railroads ever built in Texas. You can pause that to read more about it, but you start at the Palestine Depot. Here's where you'll pick up your tickets and you can read a lot about the railroad and see some pictures of the train, learn a little bit about its history and what it used to be like. These are some interesting displays that show a lot of the history of the train and how it got started. Hey, there's that Prince Albert in a can I'm always hearing about. And that train man hat. Well, anyway, you can go outside and see the train. There's about seven cars usually, if you include the caboose. And you can see all of these if you arrive early. So that's my first tip is on your excursion, make sure you arrive early. We were riding with a steam engine pulling us. And so they actually let us look at the engine, go through, talk to the people that would be driving and telling us all about the furnace and all the stuff that makes it go. You can actually get down and walk on the other side of the train, which is kind of nice. This engine is about 100 years old, actually, and it's in remarkably good shape. You can walk around, take some pictures, even take a selfie in front of the train. And it may look as good as this. Probably better because it won't have that guy in it. On this trip, we were riding on this old Amtrak car known as the Dome 509 car. They pulled it up and let people get on the other cars that were ADA accessible and all of those kinds of things. And we all lined up and began to board. You are assigned specific seats, but you won't find out those seat assignments until pretty close to your trip. This particular car has a couple types of seating. Some are just standard four tops and some are these bench seats. Both are really nice, both very comfortable, lots of padding, makes it a really enjoyable ride. Everyone receives a snack when they get on board, which is really nice. And there's a toast that's done early in the ride, but not at the very beginning. And it's, they have champagne and apple cider to toast with. After that, you're pretty much just enjoying the ride. It's about an hour and a half to get to Rusk. The scenery obviously changes with the seasons, but it's a pretty enjoyable, very smooth ride to Rusk. It was nice to be able to just relax and enjoy the scenery and enjoy conversation with people. So make sure you go with at least someone else to talk to. Along the way, your guides will be giving you some information about the train and the train line, and it's really interesting to hear about. In 80 to 90 minutes, you will arrive in Rusk, the bustling town. That's a joke, it's a really small town. And there's nothing really near the train depot, so the entire experience is really right here, and there's really not enough time before you have to head back. So let me show you what you've got here in Rusk. There's a small visitor center, which really just has more information about the train. In this case, they have information about the governors that have ridden there and about some of the movies that have been filmed using the train, which is kind of interesting. You may have seen some of these. There is a small gift shop, but it only seems to be open for 20 or 30 minutes after you arrive. So if you wanna take a look at it, you need to go quickly. Beyond that, everybody just lines up to get some food while looking at the train. There's one line for people who pre-ordered their food when they bought their tickets and one for people who did not. The line for people that pre-ordered moves pretty quickly because they don't have to worry about taking any payment. You basically just hand them your ticket and they hand you your food and it's really fast going back and forth. So I would encourage you to pre-order your food if you want to order it there. You're not supposed to bring any food. I don't know how well they really police that. Cherokee Lake does provide some nice views while you're eating and afterwards. I would recommend visiting some of the other cars while you're on this break. It's a little bit easier to get around without the train moving, and you can see into the other cars, see what they're set up like. As you can see, they're pretty comfortable looking. There is an open air car that probably is pretty hot during the summer, so I don't know if I'd recommend that one, but all the other cars seem very nice. You can even go through the lower area of the dome car. Then it was time to get everyone back on board and head on back. They move the engine to the other side of the car. 
so the train doesn't actually turn around. So going back, you'll see the exact same views just going the opposite direction. So one tip I would suggest if you're going with a group is to maybe switch sides for the ride back so that you can get a slightly different view going back. Of course, you can always look to both sides of the train, and so it will probably be some things you've seen, but you may enjoy it a little bit more. After another 80 or 90 minutes, you'll probably be back in Palestine. We got slightly delayed due to something on the tracks, but it all worked out. Then you're off the train and on your way. Palestine is only about two and a half hours from Austin, Houston, or Dallas. I would recommend it for anybody in the major metro areas of Texas to go take a look at this sometime. Be sure to like this video and leave a comment or a question if you have about the train ride down below, and I will answer it as best as I can. Of course, you've got to exit through the gift shop. You don't really have to exit through the gift shop, but it is available before and after your visit. As always, stay curious and have a good one.